In Massachusetts, our coast isn't just a boundary between land and sea. From the bustling streets of Revere to the serene landscapes of Plum Island, the coast is where two-thirds of our population lives, works, and plays. It enriches our economy with over $460 billion annually. Along the coast lies the coastal floodplain that may include marshes and beaches to develop city centers. Coastal floodplains can look different in different areas, but are identified on FEMA flood maps. In Massachusetts, coastal floodplains are regulated as land subject to coastal storm flowage. These floodplains protect us by buffering the oceans for storing storms, absorbing floodwaters, filtering pollution, and providing critical wildlife habitat and migratory corridors. Wood seafood is obviously located directly on the pier, abutting the ocean and abutting the land heading to the west. And it's very, very important that my business remain here for a long period of time so I have the opportunity to pass this business on to my children and my grandchildren. Over the past 20 years, the town of Plymouth has seen a tremendous amount of growth. There's been a resurgence in the commercial uh, district up on Main Street where people have renovated their buildings. There's been a lot of development down on the waterfront. There's been new restaurants, there's been new shopping centers, there's been a lot of new apartments that have been built in the floodplain zone on uh, Water Street all the way up to North Plymouth. And um, what it's done is put a lot of pressure, um, it's put a lot of pressure on the town to come up with plans to make sure that those areas are protected. As we embrace growth, we are also facing rising challenges. Climate change is altering our landscapes, threatening the very buffers we rely upon. As indigenous people, we always say that we are inseparable from the land. We are the land. So this land is extremely important and sacred, um, not only because of that relationship that we have with it, but also because of what it provides for us for sustenance and, and living. So we've encountered many changes over time. I mean, you can imagine the landscapes were lush and beautiful and uplands. Um, you can envision what it used to be. I think we are already seeing the impacts now from climate change. So um, more, more coastal flooding and, and sea level rise and all of these things are certainly going to be harmful later. Understanding how our coastal floodplains serve us and where they're located is key to supporting how these valuable wetlands can do their job to benefit our communities. So one thing that we learned about in our curriculum is riparian buffers and living shorelines. These help prevent erosion, and by preventing erosion, it also helps lessen the amount of floods that we experience. So I think that those are really important, and it's something that we learned a lot about. In recent years, Massachusetts has experienced numerous coastal storm events, causing damage to homes, businesses, and infrastructure. I, I walk the beach almost every day. Um, one of the major things that I see happening daily is how much the beach changes. Um, the, we'll have things that are covered by sand one day and uncovered the next. Um, I mean, the ocean is a very powerful thing. Stronger coastal storms, intense rainfall, and sea level rise are increasing risks and require us to adapt. The city gets hit with a double whammy when we have coastal storms. We have uh, coastal tidal surge that overtops our existing seawalls, uh, erodes our, our beaches on, on the ocean side. We also get backshore flooding that comes in through the Pines River, uh, Belle Isle Marsh, uh, Saugus River estuaries. And they, we have flooding from the backshore which basically hits the city on both sides and paralyzes it. I would say that in the floodplain, one of the most significant changes has been erosion. I live on the Point of Pines Beach, and we've noticed that over the past decade, there's been significant erosion. Um, with every storm, it increases. Um, we have been fortunate that about 20 years ago, um, someone had the foresight to plant um, dune grass um, one of our neighbors who also works for the city now. And because of those plantings many years ago, it has established a pretty strong dune um, system. And during that time, um, it has really protected uh, the neighborhood in a significant way. 
Across Massachusetts, from Plymouth to the Great Marsh, people are taking action. Protecting our floodplains isn't just about defense. It's about thoughtful action for long-term coastal resilience. We're often working in floodplains and wetland environments, either taking water quality measurements and, and, and flow measurements to adjust, to understand the uh, health of, of coastal ecosystems. Sometimes we're even working in our laboratories facilities to work on projects that then go out into the, the coastal marshes and floodplains. In our recent campus improvements, looking at flood maps, not only current flood maps, but predicted flood maps were a big part of where we located our, our new facilities and looking at which existing facilities may not serve a, a purpose anymore. Individual actions are important too. When property owners elevate buildings, remove hard surfaces, and preserve vegetation, they can reduce property damage and protect the natural functions of the coastal floodplain for everyone. Um, so it starts with infrastructure on the roads. It starts with uh, you know sewer connections and um, internet connections, uh, positive development, which is a mixture of commercial, commercial buildings and residential apartments um, that my fish market and restaurant would feed off of which would be an influx of tourism and an influx of, of residences, providing it's all done with the balance um, in understanding the topography of what you're dealing with. You're dealing at the lowest point of land next to the water. You have to be uh, respectful of nature. You have to be respectful of the storms, of sea level rise, of climate change. And you have to, you have to account for that when you're planning these large projects, whether they're a town project, a state project, or a private developer. They have to be in, um, in concert with what the ocean is going to throw at you over the next 30 years. Our coastal floodplains are more than barriers against storms. They're places of recreation, joy, and biodiversity. In the face of rising seas and intensifying storms, coastal floodplains are key to safeguarding our heritage, our homes, and our future along the shore.